Good morning. Uh, we are meeting together again in this way in order to uh, look at our Sunday school lesson. Uh, to look at an overview, uh, we have uh, uh, we've been looking at Life Ways uh, Bible Studies for Life. Uh, this uh, uh, in this section, and uh, we're looking at after God's own heart, a fresh look at the Ten Commandments. Uh, this particular lesson is honor marriage, and uh, we recognize that in this uh, third commandment dealing with loving our neighbor as ourself, that uh, the family and the family relationship is more threatened today uh, than it's ever been. And so as we look at this, we are doing a little bit like we've done in the last uh, several lessons as we've uh, looked at the command itself uh, in the scripture, this, uh, this time being Exodus 20 and verse 14, uh, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And uh, we also look at uh, an example either of uh, keeping the commandment as we uh, looked at uh, the manner in which uh, the commandment was kept in, uh, in uh, having reverence to life, uh, or we look at a way in which it was not kept, as in the matter of Absalom with David in honoring his parent. And today, as we look at David in his um, uh, in his adulterous relationship with uh, with Bathsheba, as we um, uh, recognize, probably as the most uh, well known uh, example uh, that we have anywhere. Uh, probably uh, most people have at least read something about it, and that's found in Second uh, Samuel 11 and uh, verses 1 through 5. And so we'll uh, look at each of these uh, to some extent. Uh, marriage, of course, we know had its uh, origins at the very dawn of human history as God brought Adam and Eve together as companions for life. And of course, we also know that sin altered the relationship that they had with God, and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. And as a result of it, we recognize the sin nature that uh, we all have to deal with. And we recognize that in that relationship that there were things that, uh, that changed as a result of that, and the children that were born, uh, their first uh, son uh, killed uh, their second, and and uh, uh, so we recognize that situation with Cain and Abel and everything that had to do with that. But as we look at this, we recognize that God's design has never changed. He planned for marriage to be a lifelong covenant between one man and one woman, and that's what our lesson is about. And it tells us plainly, as their point uh, of the lesson is, that physical intimacy is reserved for one man and woman within the covenant of marriage. And God uh, takes that covenant very seriously. And we should take that covenant very seriously as well. Marriage vows that we make are vows not only to our spouse, but vows uh, that are made to God. And, of course, as we look at this, we recognize that in the world that we live in, uh, it, this is not uh, an easy or a simple subject. Uh, sexuality is not uh, easy to talk about to begin with, uh, even with movies and TV and commercials glorifying it and lifting it up and making everything seem like uh, that's what life is all about. Uh, the Bible does not teach that sex is wrong, but that it can be used wrongly. Uh, this law is made to protect the family and to protect family relationships, and that's uh, and that's what we're looking at, and that's uh, the whole circumstance that we're talking about. This commandment against adultery and marriage is a critical one, as it says in, a, in the, the lesson booklet. It says, we are to watch over our marriages and the marriages of others with all diligence. In other words, we're supposed to take not only our vows serious, but we're to take other people's vows serious as well. And uh, that's... Uh, and that's uh, what we see as David uh, uh, in this uh, lesson doesn't take seriously as he uh, looks upon another woman who is another man's wife and everything that happened as a result of that, which really 
uh, caused great chaos in the country in which he was the king, as well as uh, in the um, uh, as, w as well as all of his family, uh, with so many things uh, taking place as a result of what of what he had done in every sense uh, that we look at that. So, uh, uh, so as we look at this, uh, let's uh, let's look at a couple of things. Uh, that are very significant. To begin with, I think it's very important for us to recognize and understand that no matter what society says, or what the worldview is, or what seems to be the norm around us, uh, no matter what we see or hear on TV or, or in, in any kind of uh, movie or TV program or anything else that has anything to do with it, uh, that uh, what seems to be the norm around us it doesn't change what God established. God established the family that is one man and one woman in a lifetime relationship making a family. That's, uh, that's what this is about. Now, plainly and simply, we recognize and uh, what often is looked at more than anything else probably is men with men or women with women and the Bible makes it plain that that's a sin. It also makes it very plain that premarital sex is sin, that living together in a sexual relationship outside of marriage is sin, that adultery is sin, and the Bible is very plain about every one of those things and it speaks to us about them. Uh, the lesson today is, uh, is about adultery and that's what we're going to be looking at. Jesus, as he did with murder, explains adultery and he takes it beyond the act to show the intent, the thought, the look, and the heart. And he makes it very plain as we look at that, that uh, he say, as he tells us in Matthew 5, 27 and 28, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, basically and plainly, that tells us that there are several other things that we need to recognize as being sin. Pornography is sin. Uh, dirty pictures and books are sinful. Uh, suggestive remarks are sinful. Dirty jokes and innuendo have no place in the life of a Christian, and they shouldn't be there. That's just plain and simple. That's the way the Bible teaches it, and that's uh, what the Bible uh, the Bible shows us over and over again in every situation. So what should we do? Well, we need to stay away from temptation. We need to dress properly. And we need to, uh, to not look or think about immoral things. We need to let our uh, thoughts uh, be pure and right. And the Bible uh, tells us that in uh, the book of Colossians when it says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. That's where our thoughts ought to be, and that's where our attitude ought to be. And so I'm thankful that God, in His grace and goodness, has blessed me in such a way that has protected, uh, protected me. I've been uh, sexually intimate with only uh, one woman in my life, and she has been my wife for 46 years, and she's the mother of my daughter, and I'm so very uh, thankful for that. But the reality is that if you have been in, in, in a relationship that you shouldn't have been, what you need to do is repent. You need to uh, look to God. You need to ask forgiveness. You need to reach out to Him. And the reality is that, uh, that we'll all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, whether they've ever... Uh, done this or not, uh, there have been sins, and, and sins need to be repented of, and uh, we need to live a life that is uh, pure and right before God. And uh, so uh, we look at this uh, particular circumstance and situation, and we see uh, what uh, took place uh, back in Second uh, Samuel as David uh, did the things uh, that he did, which led to uh, adultery and murder, and uh, it led to um, uh, confusion in the nation and difficulty in his family and uh, the death of his children and one thing or another. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Samuel 11, uh, beginning at verse 1, And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David 
and sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an eventide that David rose, arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned into her house, and the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Those are the scriptures that uh, speak about the sin that David did. We know the story very well. We recognize that Nathan the prophet came in and uh, told David, uh, gave him a story about a lamb and several things that uh, that happened following all of this after David uh, had actually uh, brought her into his house as his wife after uh, having uh, Uriah come home for a little bit, uh, but he didn't go home actually to his house. He just stayed outside the, uh, the palace and went back to the battle and he sent a letter with him and uh, told Joab, his uh, commander-in-chief, to send him up next to the wall. And, uh, uh, and he, uh, of course, the idea was that he would be killed in that circumstance, and he was. And uh, so, in effect, uh, David used the enemy to kill uh, the man that was the husband of the woman uh, that he had sexual relationships with and uh, that was pregnant with his child. And... Uh, so, uh, following that, he brought her into his house, and made her his wife, and then uh, uh, Nathan came in and talked with him and made him recognize the sin that he had done, and uh, of course David uh, repented of the sin, but it didn't prevent uh, the events that followed that uh, were the result of that sin uh, that David did. And so all of those things were, were a part uh, of that. Now, uh, you know, reality is that uh, when we look at this, God has made it very plain all the way through. The kind of relationship that we're supposed to have, the kind of circumstance that we're supposed to have, and uh, the intimacy is only to be uh, between a man and his wife. And uh, to honor God, uh, uh, you know, we see another instance in the Bible, and our lesson writer uh, mentions it in talking about a different person who did honor the commandment as he uh, spoke about Joseph as Joseph was sold into slavery uh, into Egypt and how that uh, his master's uh, wife uh, tried to entice him and how he ran from her presence and was wrongly accused and put into prison but God uh, viewed and saw the circumstance and situation and he brought him around uh, to a place where he used him uh, to save alive his entire family and uh, so, you know, we, we see one who honored, uh, even though he was a single man, he honored the relationship of his, uh, of his master and his master's wife, the vows that they had made, and recognized that marriage was, uh, was at God's institute and that, and, uh, and that it would be a sin uh, to view it in any other kind of way. And uh, so when we look at all of these things, uh, we uh, we see plainly and simply uh, what uh, the Bible is taught all the way through. Uh, physical intimacy is reserved for one man and one woman within the covenant of marriage. That's uh, the relationship that God designed in the way that He designed it, and the only way uh, that it ought uh, to be in any sense. Uh, so what we need to do is make sure uh, that we do what's proper and right in every kind of way uh, and if at any time in our life we have done uh, what was wrong then we need to repent of that wrongdoing trust the Lord and follow him and uh, and trust Jesus and the work that he did on the cross of Calvary now these are not easy subjects uh, but the reality is that most of us uh, know uh, at least something about the Ten Commandments and we recognize uh, this as one of the Ten Commandments. It is the Seventh Commandment. It is the third 
that speaks of loving our neighbor as ourself, of being, uh, of, of recognizing uh, their rights uh, above our own. The reality is that, uh, that when we look at this, uh, there is a difference between love and lust. Uh, love uh, looks uh, to the needs of others. Uh, lust looks to our own need. It is selfish and it is wrong. And the reality is that we need to do things God's way uh, and not our own. So we need to examine our heart. We need to examine our actions. We need to examine our thoughts. Uh, we need to honor uh, our marriage and the marriages of others and recognize uh, that these are the what, this is the way that God has designed it to be. Uh, wanted to uh, mention that we... Uh, uh, that we at Stony Run Baptist Church uh, will be having morning worship at 11 o'clock and uh, we would like for you to be there if you can be uh, and uh, certainly you can contact us at uh, stonyrunbaptist at gmail.com uh, if you have any comments, questions or uh, and uh, we, would, uh, we would be glad to hear from you and uh, uh, Stony Run Baptist is at 608 Stony Run Road uh, Richmond, Kentucky, Madison County, and uh, we invite you to come and worship uh, God uh, with us. Uh, thank you for uh, taking part in our uh, little overview of our Sunday School lesson today from Exodus 20:14. Thou shalt not uh, commit adultery.